Hey y'all, I'm Brooklyn, your friendly neighborhood witch, and today we're just gonna have a little kickback. So if you um, if you want to like do laundry or do some chores, I don't know, put me on in the background. This is probably gonna be a long one. I'm gonna have some coffee, make some incense for my shop, and have a conversation about why I claim the term witch, why I practice witchcraft, a little bit of my deconversion story, and so yeah, it's gonna be a long one. And I'm probably gonna have very minimal editing, so if I say like a lot or ums a lot, just I'm human, so it's gonna happen. And I would be really interested to know what y'all's experiences have been. Did you also go through something similar as me? Um, why do you claim the term witch? What does a witch mean to you? Yada, yada, yada. So let's get into it. I'm gonna have some coffee. I guess I should start by saying that I used to be a fundamentalist Christian conservative, believe it or not. And now I feel like I am not, I wouldn't say like the opposite of that, but I'm definitely not that <laughs> at all anymore. And I grew up in the church, um, I guess from the time I was like four until I moved out of the house at like 18 or 19. And um, I believed it with all of my heart. And I also wanna preface this by saying like, I know not all Christians believe the way that I believed or were raised even the way that I was raised. And so I understand that Christians are not a monolith and that they're just like many other spiritual um, practices, that there are different subgroups, you know? and. Um, so I just want to put that out there because I know there are very progressive Christians that are incredibly cool that um, don't think being gay is a sin and that actually I've been listening to a couple of biblical scholars and such that have said on the contrary that's not at all what any of that was supposed to mean. So I find that very interesting. So I want to put all that out there because just like I don't like my practice being painted in a um, negative light like a broad generalized negative light. Sorry, my fridge just turned on. If that annoys you, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I'm not gonna unplug my fridge. Um, but yeah, just like I don't like my practice being misinterpreted or uh, painted in a broad negative general light, I'm not gonna do the same for Christians because I know that there are Christians out there that are cool and progressive my sister is one of them, yada, 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 yada. Okay, so that being said, <laughs> I'm gonna get into it. I grew up uh, going to a Church of Christ. I'm not gonna name exactly what Church of Christ that was because I'm trying to be respectful. And just to paint like a picture, it was one of those churches that is pretty literalist and very, um, restrictive, repressive. I knew from a very young age that I was, as they call it, same-sex attracted, which I find a huge issue with that term, but I digress. It's very condescending. Anyway, I knew from a very young age that I was gay, and that was really hard for me, um, but I still believed with all my heart, you know, in Jesus, and that he was the son of God, and all of that stuff. And I, just always felt like, well, this is one of my demons that I've got to work on and, you know, the whole nine. I remember, you know, being in the youth group and having, um, like, any time someone would get pregnant out of wedlock. I specifically remember on one occasion, um, this girl in the youth group, she got pregnant out of wedlock. She had to meet with the elders and she had to go to the front of the church on Sunday morning and tell them that she had conceived out of wedlock. And um, it was some real like scarlet letter type shit. It's really fucked up. Anyway, I grew up in that <laughs> to paint a little bit of a picture. Um, I remember I was supposed to sing for this uh, conference. I won't say the name of it. It was a really big one for, you know, that area. And I had... I think I was 18 at the time and I had done this photo shoot where I was wearing a leotard and heels. I think single ladies had come out and I like wanted to 
do that style of shoot anyway. And the pastor of our church took me out to lunch and was like, you know, there are some ladies in the church that are very um, upset with this photo that you've put, because I put it on Facebook, obviously. I think it was on my website, too, or something, because I had, like, a music website page at that time as well. And he was like, they're really upset with you. It's um, You're causing your brothers in Christ to to lust and to sin, you know, so the good old misogyny of it's always on the woman, that great purity culture, mm, love it. <sighs> um, anyway, you're causing your brothers in Christ to sin, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we just don't think it's a good, um, something like, you know, if you're going to be doing this conference, it's not indicative of what we represent. And basically was like, you have to take it down if you still want to perform. And that was really uncomfortable for me, <laughs> having a elderly man comment on my body and my photos and how I'm causing other men in the church to lust and da 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 and how that's a sin. It's like when I and I and at the time like I I felt so bad. I felt so like unholy so like embarrassed like it was oof and now I look back and I'm like that's not cool at all and also it should have been a, like at least like a woman talking to me or something about that like I mean none of y'all should have been saying anything like that anyway and so I had to take it down in order to perform and I took it down and now I'm like girl you shouldn't have taken that down because it also like what was weird is there was like this girl in the church that was in music theater and she literally played, and I remember I told this to my dad or something at the time, she literally played Ariel on, in a music theater play and they let her sing. Ariel wears a bra basically on stage. A bra and, you know, like a long ass skirt. But I wear a leotard, anyway. Anyway, anyway, so that paints a little bit of a picture of like what I grew up in. And I, again, I know not all churches are like this. I've just got to put that out there that that was my upbringing. And then I moved fast forward to Atlanta, Georgia, from Wichita, Kansas. And I was surrounded by a melting pot of beliefs, cultures, ethnicities, you name it. And so that honestly was a huge pivotal moment for me because I was surrounded by people that, that had different beliefs than me, that thought differently than me. Oh, Matt's coming in. And now the dogs are gonna bark. I might have to resume this later. Okay, so we're back. I had to stop really quick, but we are back now. And this time I have some tea. Uh, I think where I left off, though, was that I moved to Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moved to Atlanta. There's a melting pot of cultures, ethnicities, beliefs, yada, yada, yada. And so that naturally opened me up um, to a different mindset. It started to shed some layers for me. I started questioning even more what I believed. And I started researching. My dad had actually gifted me before I moved this Bible that was in Quran. That it was um, it was composed together to be in Quranological order. So I read that, <laughs> and I also was reading different Christian apologists. Like I was actually doing a lot of what is called confirmation bias or bias, and. <laughs> But I was doing it in hopes to find an answer on why it was okay for me to be gay, basically. And then there were other issues I had, like with a lot of the misogyny that's in the Bible, a lot of the um, condoning of slavery, uh, the sex before marriage thing. Um, the whole like eternal damnation thing was huge for me because I remember just being like asking, you know, and not getting a credible answer from like any 
biblical scholar or even pastors that I would talk to. And that to me is like, so you set me up to fail. You knew that with my, because another thing they would always say is, well, he gave us free will. And it's like, okay, but that's still, it gets you right back to where you started. He knew that I would, with my free will, continue to be gay and not repent of that. I guess my point is it doesn't negate the fact that even with free will, he knew what we would do with our free will and he still created it that way. And to me, it's like, so you, again, you set me up to fail. You, you set me up to burn forever in eternity in hell. And I do know that there are Christians that, um, that don't believe in like this, fire and brimstone eternity of punishment and pain and torture and hell Um, because also that always seemed really like uh, silly to me too so for something I do in my finite life of existence here on this planet here in this realm you're gonna even though you created me this way and you knew with my free will I would be this way you're going to infinitely punish me and torture me for that when you created me this way, you knew with my free will I would be this way. You knew what it would take for me to be convinced that the God of the Bible is the one true God of the Bible and you still chose not to give me like, you knew specifically what it would take for me, Brooklyn, Jade, to be convinced that this biblical God is the one true God and you chose not to show it to me. like. But I'm going to be punished for eternity in hell for that. You know what I'm saying? And like, it just like, and the more, more research I did, it just, it didn't, it just started to like, just different things started to shed. And also I just started reading more on science and, and how a lot of stuff in the Bible, scientifically speaking, is just like, uh, impossible. So like the worldwide flood, there's no, no, um, archaeological evidence that would like that is even showing that that was something that happened does that does that make sense sorry I'm not trying to make this about like how the bible's wrong because that's not what I think I do think that there is a lot of truth in the bible and I think that if I were to be a Christian I would definitely be one of those extremely progressive Christians that takes it more as a like I actually do think the bible is just a really beautiful book of I guess it would technically be a beautiful grimoire where there's a lot of truth in it, there's a lot you can learn from it, what have you, but to base my whole life and mindset and morals, because there's a lot of fucked up morals in that book too, uh, and values, to base my whole entire life on that, um, I do not see and have not been given enough evidence to constitute basing my whole life and everything I do off of off of a literalist view of the Bible and so that's why I kind of feel like like with most holy books and doctrines and such that there is a lot of truth to all of it Um, but I like I've said before I don't think anyone truly and definitively knows the one true path the one true correct Um, belief to have we are all trying our best to connect to source the best way that we know how now whether you call source jesus or god or allah or what have you or just a universe we're all just trying our best to connect and to impose like because this is another thing i've had an issue with is it's always christians that comment under my posts um some are condescending and 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 hateful and some you know, I think honestly mean well, but regardless, it's like frustrating because it's like no one truly definitively knows for certain that there even is one true right path. You know what I'm saying? So like it gets on my nerves when when folks like try to proselytize to me unsolicited and or very judgmental. And so all that to say, I ended up Falling into Wicca first, obviously. Or actually, no, I was an atheist after I left being a Christian. Um, and then I think I was an atheist for like a year. I don't know. 
And then I started practicing Wicca. And then I think that's always kind of a starting point for a lot of witches. And eventually I was like, well, mm, this isn't really for me. There's a lot of beauty in it. And I, again, like I respect people who are Wiccan for sure. I respect them. But it just wasn't for me. It didn't really resonate for a multitude of reasons. But um, but I still loved much of the... Man, I need to add more water to this. I still loved a lot of the connection to uh, nature, to the universe, to the cosmos. I love the whole concept of... I think for me, being a witch is... Because that's another thing I was going to say. No one person I don't believe has the true definition of what a witch is either. But I can tell you that um, Merriam-Webster definitely doesn't have <laughs> the correct term of a witch. I think theirs, it's like warts. Um, I don't know. Anyway. But anyway, I started out with Wicca after being an atheist. And then I kind of like loved a lot of, you know, the ideology behind it and the idea of it. But then I kind of switched more into just being like a I think then I kind of I turned into more of just like a green witch and I think I've kind of just sat just about there and um now I kind of consider myself like a sonic witch or a sound witch or a sonic spellcaster and also a green witch so I just have always loved when it comes to the occult and to witchcraft the the connection to source and to the universe and to nature, to the cosmos, um, without any dogma, without any doctrine, because then that allows space for you to truly connect in a way that is resonating. And that's why I think also I claim that term like sonic witch or sonic spellcaster, because, you know, we talk a lot about when it comes to music specifically, if something is dissonant um, or it's not in time or in sync, um, there is this like imbalance, right, in the song. And sometimes that's intentional um, because it can, it, that even that can kind of make a shift. But I think with the craft, you're allowing yourself to be in sync um, with with the cosmos and with the energies that be without this like looming cloud or this control and, and, and that like pivots you in ways that maybe wouldn't even be natural to you. So for example, like me with Christianity, there was always this like connection to source there, right? Um, that was God and Jesus. However, there was always this like, it almost felt like someone was constantly like pivoting me like, nope, but we're not going to be gay though. Oh, nope. We need to be pure, though. Oh, nope. Don't do any of that stuff. That's new age. That's witchy. That's not of God. That's not of Jesus. Uh, you know what I mean? So there was this very structural and... Uh, I'm trying to think of the terms that I'm looking for. It was very restrictive. And I feel like because of that, it can cause people to to fall out of sync with with source and with the universe because it can be so confined. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining that the best way I want to, but I feel like a stronger, and in the same way Christians will say, I felt called to Christ, you know, when he calls you, you'll know. I felt called to witchcraft. <laughs> like, all jokes aside, like, that was the first time that... I fully felt in connected in all of its entirety because I look back on my Christian days and I was always being like I, I always believed in being connected um, to source I just called it Jesus and I called it God and I always felt that there was something greater than me obviously but I do remember there would be times where I'd be reading something in the Bible and it would just be like, that's dissonant. That doesn't resonate. But here we go again, you know, that pivot, that shift, that confinement. And then I'd be like, well, not listening to my intuition here, not listening to this, the voice, you know, 
uh, that just must be Satan. And really what it was, when I look back, I truly, truly feel that that was my intuition clocking some things that were dissonant with what my spiritual practice was actually supposed to be. And I know there are probably going to be some Christians listening to this, and they're just going to, you know, say like, oh, you know, honey, no, that, that was, you were being tempted, but you'll come back on the wagon, you know, we're all, we all fall short, but we're saved by grace, you know, that whole thing. Um, but in the same way that, like, Christians, again, like, feel called to something and they, they can't explain it, I would say that the same goes for me. I can't explain it. I just have felt this, this pull um, more towards the craft and ancient modalities and spiritual practices, and I'll get into what I mean by that. And I've full, felt this, like, push away from Christianity uh, for a long time, obviously. But again, I respect everyone's beliefs. And so when I say, you know, ancient modalities and such, um, pretty much the term witch came around because colonizers that were trying to colonize and enforce and push Christianity onto everybody uh, would call anything that was other than that witchcraft. So you could have just been like a cunning man or a wise woman, an herbalist, a midwife, uh, a doula. You could have been, you know, a black person, you know, coming here after the transatlantic slave trade, just trying to keep continue to practice, um, you know, spiritual practices that were native to you. Um, but that was also called, you know, witchcraft. I think that's why you see a lot of demonization of hoodoo and voodoo is because for so long in the media and in Christian, you know, revisionist history and, um, yeah, just <laughs> especially in the West, uh, it's it was always called witchcraft. It was demonized. It demonized. It was demonized because we wanted to, and I say we meaning like you know Christians wanted everybody to practice that. And I do believe that while there were a lot of people that that maybe really genuinely believed that they were um, helping others by converting them into Christianity. I, I know that those people exist and that they mean well. I also understand that, you know, you can look back to the Council of Nicaea and Emperor Constantine and all that. There was a very clear motive of controlling people, of power over people. And so if we all can be of one mindset, one belief, you know, it, it ushers in an easier ability to control people. And again, I'm not saying all Christians proselytize or go do ministry work because they, you know, they want to control over people and what have you. I do believe a lot of Christians genuinely do it out of the kindness of their heart because they believe they're saving people and that that is what they're called to do in the Bible. And I just want to make that clear. Um, but this is why I claim the term witch because... These were people who basically practiced other ancient modalities, other spiritual practices, uh, many that predated Christi Christianity, but because it wasn't that, it was called witchcraft. And also things that were called witchcraft were things that also outside of just the whole church thing, um, as people, when we don't understand things, we can be um, very quick to dismiss it or to demonize it as a means to not have to face it or not have to learn more about it or not have to feel that feeling of discomfort. And so I think that's also a lot of where the term, you know, in, in the demonization of the term witch came from. So the reason why I call myself a witch is because I want to reclaim that term uh, similarly to, um, you know, the term queer. Uh, being part of the LGBTQIA plus community, uh, that is a term that is used within that because we've reclaimed that word, you understand? And so I think I look similarly uh, in the same light. I look at the term witch in that way. My ancestors uh, 
who practice different spiritual modalities other than Christianity would have been called witches or were called witches for merely just practicing their own form of spirituality to connect to source, to connect to the universe. And so I'm reclaiming that word. I'm a witch. I practice um, the art of the craft. And for me, that is connecting to the universe, to the different energies and frequencies that be, and trying to make shift happen um, in a way that is in alignment with balancing the scales. And... Um, yeah, that's why I'm a witch. Um, I don't know if that sums it up. This is probably really long. But let me know, like, you know, what else you want to hear? I, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say. I just, I really wish people could be more open-minded and understanding that just because someone doesn't believe like you it doesn't mean that they're demonic. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't mean that they are harming others or harming themselves. It just looks different than your personal modality. And that's okay because nobody truly definitively knows all the answers to the universe. So yes, this is this is why I'm a witch, and I, I'm going to cut this off now. This has been really long. Let me know if you have any questions, any other topics you want me to talk about. I'd love to hear below, like, your experience and why you call yourself a witch and why you came into the craft. And maybe you don't even call it witchcraft. Maybe you call yourself a mystic. Maybe you call yourself a healer, a root worker, a conjurer. And I do think it's worth noting that not everybody who practices things, I might have said this already, that looks similar to the craft or someone who practices witchcraft, not everyone who practices something that looks similar to this would actually feel comfortable or would consider what they're doing the craft. And that's totally valid and fine too. So we need to also, as witches, not try to impose, you know, our beliefs onto others um, as well. Yeah, I think that is all for today. This is already so long. I love y'all bunches. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!